Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to our new moon gathering for the meditation for the common good. Today's meditation will culminate the cycle of Leo Virgo reflection and sharing on the topic of right relationships. Unification through right relations with all the kingdoms. This topic was suggested by the Circle of Custodians of the Purpose, uh, our uh, project, and we meditated together under the energy of the full moon, invoking the vision and asking for the hierarchical guidance, uh, bringing forward ideas and thought forms that could help humanity to come through the current initiatory crisis. So today, we come together to share our understanding, offering seed thoughts that we will magnetize and radiate through our group meditation to the mental field of humanity. So let us start with recollecting the purpose of our work, which Rebecca will sound. So our purpose in this project, which is to meditate for the common good, is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet best we can through our group meditation and as we meditate together we are aware that we're focusing our group intention for the common good and that we are attempting to reference and bring alive the connection spiritual laws and principles and we are looking to magnetize thought forms of solution for practical action in the world and in this month of Virgo with our topic of unification through right relations with all kingdoms we're working with the earth element on the mutable cross. And we're using the mutable cross to explore topic areas related to harmonization and right relations generally. So in this new moon time, we work with the energies of Virgo, which DK says is one of the most significant signs in the zodiac whose symbology concerns the whole goal of the evolutionary process, which is to shield, nurture, and finally reveal the hidden spiritual reality. In this sign, he tells us, the opposites are blended and are of great importance to each other. So let us hold this influence and atmosphere of Virgo in which we work in mind. As we come together today, beginning our group alignment through the naming circle. And over to you, Tracy, to lead us through that alignment. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, 
The naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. As your name is called, please unmute yourself. Say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor, calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. It's Alexander calling in from Brooklyn, New York in the United States. Welcome. Rebecca. Hi everyone, it's Rebecca calling from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland on the east coast of Australia. Welcome. Aneta. Hello, this is Aneta from Seoul, Denmark. Welcome. Bernard. Hello, Bernard from France. Welcome. Brigitte. Brigitte, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Birgitta. Darcy. Greetings, friends. This is Darcy calling from Washington, D.C. area. USA. Welcome. Helen. Hello, this is Helen. I'm calling in from England near London. Welcome. Welcome. John. Hello, everyone. This is John Sutterby joining from Missouri, USA. Welcome. Kiki. Hello, this is Kiki from Washington, District of Columbia, USA. Welcome. Lynn. Hi, this is Lynn Green from Ohio in the United States. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose.
Thank you, friends. So as we continue our work, this time of the new moon, as the sun passes the sign of Virgo, we come to share and offer seed thoughts that could be magnetized and radiated to humanity. As we were meditating during the full moon, these three questions that you see on the screen were offered to focalize our reflection. That uh, they are not limiting in any case, as the topic itself is much wider. So as we invite us to start sharing, these questions will be on the screen uh, for some time, and we will hold the open space, visualizing the group chalice receptive for all the energies that each of us will offer. So whenever you're ready to share, please uh, raise your hand or just unmute yourself and step in. I can start the sharing. Um, I just put it in the chat, the link to the community impressions board. Um, there is a quote from uh, Roberto Sagioli uh, on peace that uh, quite impressed me uh, in, in the last couple of weeks uh, as we were meditating on this topic of unification through right relations. Uh, and this idea is that peace is al already existent. And it's just the question of removing obstacles for peace to be manifested. So, in a way, it's the question of our alignment. And also in that quote, uh, he says that it's up to each of us to um, bring peace on earth and manifest peace. And so, therefore, it's a question of our alignment, almost like in the, in the mystery of Sphinx, uh, which, in a way, the symbol of this cycle uh, linking Leo and Virgo. It's connecting the higher mind and the lower mind, allowing, creating Antakarana, creating the rainbow bridge through which the energy of right relations or energy of peace can flow and can express itself in this world. 
in the life of each of us. Thank you. This is Anita. I think it is a, a very wise um, to say that peace is to remove the obstacles and that peace is already there. I've often thought about um, the zodiac's uh, clockwork um, is um, somehow um, removing these obstacles because the planets are, are um, clockwise uh, coming to to um, in 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 signs and and uh, in in constellations with with other uh, planets that that are um, um, influencing humanity. Um, now, for instance, um, we have a lot of the outer planets in, in retrograde, and that is the old thought forms are somehow in the forefront. And we see the, the Pluto retrograde in, 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 in uh, uh, Capricorn is somehow responsible for all this going backwards um, historical wise um, in, in countries and in, in governments um, to, to old ways of seeing things and, and as I see it, it, it is old way, ways of, of uh, uh, that, that we are um, going to look at in, in another way. Um, we are going to look at the uh, at it with, with uh, somehow more more um, um, soul conscious ways um, to see that it is old fashioned and let it go. Um, like all, all the wars in, in the world, uh, it is an old-fashioned world uh, uh, way to, to solve uh, questions uh, and, and we somehow have to, to um, realize that uh, humanity as a whole, um, yeah, uh, just some thoughts, thank you. Um, in, in my reading of the um, Alice Bailey books, at some point, um, DK says something to the effect that peace um, is what we find when we are um, at one with our true self. Um, and of course, I think that can be broadened to uh, include what we talk about where people recognize um, their higher selves, their soul selves, um, in large numbers, would certainly bring a transformation to our to our world as we know it. Um, and I had a thought in preparation for this that um, one part of recognizing the higher self would certainly be a recognition of um, reincarnation <clears throat> as. Um, at least for, for many people, I think reincar the truth of reincarnation. And I think in my perception of that, um, they would also, we would also all realize our responsibility in creating the past um, and the problems that we're now trying to solve, which I think would bring an entire, entirely different perspective to what we're doing and the possibilities we have to recreate our world. Um, and I also saw something um, that I wanted to share with you folks. 
um, I think it was white magic. Yeah. Um, DK says, um, this is requirements for the disciple. He says, um, the masters look to see who can struggle and contend for principle with personalities and yet the ki keep the link of love intact. Um, this counts perhaps more than men realize and a man who can stand for principle and yet love all human beings, refusing compromise and yet refusing hate, has something rare to offer in these days and the great ones can use him. See to it therefore all of you who work that with clear vision, upright purpose, and firm undeviating action, you for, forge ahead. See to it that you deal with patience and forbearance with those of your brothers who choose the lesser principle and the lesser right, who sacrifice the good of the group for their own personal ends, or who use unworthy methods. Give to them love and care and a ready helping hand, for they will stumble on the way and sound the depth of the law. Stand ready then to lift them up and to offer to them opportunities for service, knowing that service is the great healer and teacher. That seemed so appropriate to maybe our discussion today, certainly our last discussion. Um, thanks very much. Love to you all. Hello, this is John. Um, so this idea of taking away continues to fascinate me, this um, idea that everything that's needed is already there, um, infinity, so to speak. And this alignment, too, I was thinking, um, as Alexander was speaking, what, what came to mind was the Agni Yoga tradition and the, the words of um, El Moria and the, um, the Rorks is the um the heart gateway and so the whole book dedicated to the heart and aligning yourself um and, and kind of sinking into your heart and acting from that place and so that i i believe you know my interpretation of that text as well as others other things i've read is this idea that the heart is um one gateway to infinity and so if we, we act from that, if we think, speak and act from that place, that um, helps um, helps in terms of alignment. The other thing that came to mind was co-measurement, this idea. And they speak a lot about that in um, Agni Yoga. And I remember kind of having a hard time grasping that until I got really into that tradition. And my interpretation of that based on the, the teachings is this idea that um, straight, straight knowledge and co-measurement is that you use infinity or one could view that as the monadic consciousness or the i am um or, or, or spirit core depending on how you refer to it but that innermost part of your being that is common to all people and all things um consciousness itself that's that forms reality and if you measure your thoughts words and actions or, or co-measure in, in their words in accordance with that then you're in perfect alignment and so if we think of, you know, our, ourselves perhaps in a humanity, you know, we're, we're probably somewhere between between here and there, but it's always kind of a, um, it seems to me like I view it as like a measuring stick, kind of a, a yardstick in a way of just saying, well, how how is that? Now, you know, and then what is affin infinity? That's kind of a very vague concept. And then, but I think an even closer step to that is the masters themselves who serve as examples and depending on the qualities that, we serve to um you know and, and evoke within ourselves but then ultimately within humanity um that basically goes through so you know for example like omoria would be if we wanted to look at the um <clears throat> excuse me like the will of god and the the divine will and the blueprint that would be um omoria the example of the teaching and the, the patience of a teacher and um, psychology would be the master kathumi you know and of course um Duakul in terms of the teachings and the embodiment of love and these, you know, but if, if you look at across like the spectrum, you know, perhaps our behavior is in, you know, alignment with the master's embodiment of that quality. And then perhaps to the masters likely have some yardstick that they co-measure themselves between themselves and infinity, perhaps, or, or infinity itself. I obviously I can't can't speak to that, um, but it's it's fascinating as we we read these different things and we share. Um, within this community, how everything kind of how kind of goes back to that common thread and, and these common threads. And 
you know, it really, it does speak to the universality of the, the teachings and the, um, the material that's out there. Thank you. This is Helen. I'd just like to make a few comments. There's lots of ideas coming through. And uh, that's the idea of finding the, the threads. Um, when Annette was speaking, I, I did so like this idea of all these old forms kind of forming a, a barrier and it just brought home to me how, how important the you know the teaching on non-attachment to not be attached to these old ideas these expectations um, thought forms that have been with humanity for, for so long these you know, if, if the new age or the, the new era is to reveal itself, we need to let go of these attachments, I, 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 that idea. And then I, I saw a, a, as part of this removing these barriers, um, this atmic force coming through, which is um, part of the, the triangle supporting the Christ in his reappearing as he, uh, as that energy surges forward and helps us clear all these attachments. We have the spirit of peace coming from that atmic plane and i think dk refers to the spirit of peace as the avatar of equilibrium and i think this balance and equilibrium is so much to do ah, we're being being balanced enough to move forward we tend to to think of the balance going uh, from side to side, from scale to scale, but once they're balanced, then the whole uh, movement is is forwards, and the spirit of peace is this balance coming through, and it this also I think is part of the alignment. It's coming through the the buddhic and the mental, and right through to the etheric and I also would like to say something about the etheric and the importance of trying to live unattached to the dense physical and in this etheric, where we have this wonderful web, I think in the beginning of esoteric healing, DK says it is one thread, but it, it, it links everything and it links all of us and all of humanity. And it links humanity with all other forms, the animal forms, the plants, the, the minerals, and I think above too, I think it links us with the higher forms, which of course are, are rather, rather different in, in some ways. But uh, I was listening to somebody yesterday who was saying when we're on the etheric, we are able to be in harmony with hierarchy, the uh, dwelling place of souls, because they are on the, that is a buddhic plane, and the buddhic plane is the etheric of the cosmic uh, being. 
So we have a link with our etheric and the buddhic being the etheric for the next step up. And I hope somewhere in there you can follow the various trains of thought I have, but I think they are, are connected, this alignment, this breaking through the attachment and this lifting up into the etheric so that we're linked with the buddhic plane which is the etheric for the for the masters thank you Hi, uh, Jill here. I apologise for my late arrival. Um, I see the questions today and hope I'm not going to repeat what somebody else has said. But on the first question, I think uh, three qualities needed to recognise a good relationship are when there is harmony and understanding and empathy. Um, harmony, acceptance and understanding between people. But the second point, um, empathy is required to enhance our ability to relate rightly, to be able to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. And for the third point, lack of criticism and acceptance for others and um, accepting that everyone's different but not judging thank you this is bernard when we uh, recognize and uh, align with the soul uh, uh, we become uh, automatically uh, right uh, relationship with all uh, sentient beings and uh, when we are uh, aligned with the soul uh, we also work uh, automatically for the future then uh, the soul is the future thank you This is Lynn again. Um, um, Jill, I would add two to your list. Um, in some way, an acceptance of responsibility is required. Indeed. Um. 
I would just like to add, oh, sorry. I just wanted to, to just add a comment about criticism um, and, and not being critical. Well, DK says criticism, that dire creator of misery. And I think I, I like that. Let's get rid of that. Hello, everyone. This is Michael and a um, couple of ideas that popped into my mind um, in relating rightly it seems as though if we are able to perceive the diversity of creation as one and uh, ourselves as a unit within that diversity as part of that oneness then uh, we should be able to uh, relate correctly with, with all that we can perceive and all that we cannot perceive because uh, we are it. And um, as far as what does unity look, look like, um, it, it comes across to me that there is a law of separateness which is an essential law that allows our source at whatever level uh, to begin the creative process and enter into the evolutionary involutionary cycle and uh, unity being a soul quality it's it's um, letting go of uniformity and finding that that oneness that occurs as soul uh, group love. Uh, Lynn had touched on uh, love being important, and uh, Tibetan writes how the law of love is the fundamental principle and fundamental law of the universe um, and that's that occurs not only the whole universe but also uh, the systemic planes as well thank you hello this is john um, returning to the concept of taking away an alignment and perhaps aligning to that in infinity or monadic consciousness. I, I was considering the, the Anta Karana and the, rain, you know, the rainbow bridge, what exactly is that? And the word balance came to mind. And I believe that's a key attribute to achieving that, um, that, that alignment or that taking away. If, if you look at the, the colors of the rainbow, they each embody a individual ray, the, the seven rays. And if you were perfectly in balance with the seven, um, I, I suspect perhaps that would trigger the the rainbow bridge, or and it's you know, and this is written about in Tibetan Buddhism as the um, rainbow body and things like that, where um, you know, in, individuals spontaneously combust into into light and leave behind a, a pile of hair and um, fingernails, so to speak. And you know, this this they speak about this in other traditions too. And so, but I think it's this this perfect balancing. And again, this goes to um, if you look at Kabbalah, the um, you know, Jewish mysticism, this idea of the middle pillar staying between between the two extremes perfectly. And I, I believe that's kind of what's happening in this is that perhaps a master is called a master in that they've achieved that mastery of the middle pillar and that balancing of extremes. And then as um, disciples, we're, we're seeking to what, kind of walk that, that middle pillar as well. And, you know, and then also serve as the example to humanity. And then also, you know, this comes into play, I think, everywhere, all throughout humanity and everything that's done. If everything had that perfect balance and equilibrium, it's like the, fly, the flywheel begins spinning very fast and it doesn't have the wobble to it. And so it, it's not only spinning fast, it's built perfectly. And so you build this incredible momentum 
um, when this happens. And so, but again, if there's imbalance anywhere in the system, that's where things kind of start shaking and, and falling apart, so to speak. And I think that's what we see a lot today is things, things may look good, um, but they're, they're a little wobbly somewhere or a little just um, off balance somewhere. And then when, especially when you get to like, the higher speeds or they become more visible, that's when they start falling apart. And so this, um, this equilibrium, so to speak, or perfect balance um, is the way to go. And I, you know, and I think within the ageless wisdom tradition, you know, it's, it's an even simpler way of looking at it. It's just the, the, the three um, ray aspects of love, wisdom, and power. If those three are perfectly in balance, that's when the real, that's when we access the, the, you know, the soul aspects, but then also the monadic consciousness, depending on that level of balance, because if any one of those three are out of balance, then the alignment falls apart. And that's, that's when things get a little, um, you know, tricky, love tempered without um, power or wisdoms and effective too much power without love is very, um, very severe, severe, especially if it doesn't have wisdom and wisdom without um, love and power lacks compassion or the ability to get things done. And so, but if the three of those are in perfect balance, that's again, the flywheel starts spinning very quickly and very stably and um, and and things things begin to to go really well with that. And I think on a, a microcosmic level, we've all experienced that in that when you get in that perfect flow state where time and space seem to melt away, and it's almost like you're a bird with the wing on, the wind under their wings, and you're just perfectly flowing. It doesn't take any any energy on your part to do things. Somehow you you might get a whole day's worth of work done in an hour and not even realize the hour clipped by. But then all of a sudden something distracts you out of that alignment or you may you may have a thought that's out of alignment um, or, a, or a feeling or an action. And then, boom, you drop out of it just like that. And it's like you've fallen off the platform. And then all of a sudden you're back in the, the third dimensional reality and and things are happening. And so I think I think a key is kind of achieving this alignment, removing the inessentials and. And literally just, you know, I go back to the, the Taoist stuff. One of my favorite things is um, effortless effort. And so in, in a way it's effort, but then it's, it's effortless. And then the minute you, you try to do it, it sort of falls apart. And so um, when you know it, when you experience it, you know it, but it's, um, it defies words. So thank you. Hi, it's Rebecca. Um, so much richness. I I just wanted to go back to um, this or bringing together some ideas that I've heard that fit together for me, which is I'm just going back to what Annette said about the retrograde plan, retrograde motion of the planets. I've never I haven't come across the idea before that looking back to the past i had come across different ideas with that but just that idea of um looking back to the past and then the whole idea of karma that lynn brought forward and the karmic responsibility that we have not only as individuals but for history and what's here now um, as we've reincarnated in groups across time um, and as humanity creating the present. Um, so I think, and then Helen brought in the idea of objectivity in relation to how we look at things. And um, I think it seems like um, being able to view these, the past and history in an objective manner is what can help us come into the present in a new way. Um, so it seems very important to, as we want to move forward, to to integrate that past, you know, in this kind of spiral of time which is ever present as past, present and future, how they all work together in a, in a single flow so that that idea of 
objectively looking back as we take responsibility for moving forward um, seems really relevant in terms of how we how we relate and how we do our relationships. Um, um, this other idea about um, removing the inessential um, and then, you know, <laughs> Helen sort of saying criticism, the dire creator of misery, let's get rid of that. So um, uh, definitely that's one of the, the obstacles and um, there are so many that come with our personalities um, and I think it's one of the qualities of the ability to create right relationships when we have the will to do this and it's something that we have to develop the ability to put the group first or um, put put our, our our personal aspirations or things that are dear to us um, aside because we love the group more or we love the cause of the group more um, and that's something we have to work at um, so I think yeah it's a really important part of learning to take responsibility and so that we can have right relationships and so that we can move in new directions and then the last one was about um, walking forward um, and um, balance as moving forward was what Helen said, I think, and, and um, moving forward in balance. And I just had this sense of walking as balance and that balance is not a static thing. You know, when we walk, this amazing balance that happens as we transfer weight from one leg to the other and what a dynamic process walking in balance is. Thank you. This is Annette. Um, um, I agree with what you said about balance. Um, in, in in Kabbalah, you you uh, I've heard you 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 can never be um, in the middle pillar um, because you you need to walk forward and then. When you take a, a, a step forward, you immediately get out of balance from the middle pillar and, and go uh, in the right or the left uh, pillar and and you need to go forward. Um, and uh, I, I thought also, also about um, um, what you said about uh, flow. Um, and I thought about um, being in the now. In the um, you you uh, sort of have to lift your consciousness as high up as possible, and um, so that you have just uh, you you have both the the past and the present and the the the, the future uh, as one uh, now. Um, and I thought about the analogy uh, you, you probably know about uh, 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 an art gallery, and there is uh, it is night and it is dark, and uh, there is um, some thieves that is coming in, and they have a, a flashlight, and they go from picture to picture in in a, a crossway uh, light. Uh, um and perhaps also backwards and and look at all the pictures one by one and then the custodians realize that there has been a, a, a thieves uh, on the place so we 
he lights all the gallery. And then they suddenly see that both the past and the present and the future has been there all the time. They couldn't just uh, see it because of the flashlight. So there you have the eternal, the, the eternal, eternality, and the now and the flow. And um, when you get to that flow, you get this balance, but you can't stay in it forever. You have to take the next, next step forward. It is something um, very intriguing uh, thoughts there. Thank you. That's fascinating about the um, the Kabbalah, the um, you going out of balance when you move. And I had heard something to that effect as well. And um, I, I remember one author had proposed like a 80 20, you know, the, the universal Pareto principle. You know, if, you, if you're 80% in one direction and, um, you know, 20% the other, then you could have optimal optimal flow. And I, you know, I don't know if that's, that's true or not, but it is interesting. This idea is that if you are perfectly in the center, you, you may have perfect balance, but you're also like in a calm sea where nothing's, nothing's happening and you may get kind of bored for a while. Now it, it's, it's fascinating too. I, I recall in the Taoist tradition where they talk about sages of old, they would have this technique called guarding the one and they would purposefully not, um, not take any actions or move. I don't want to say like completely paralyzed, but if they were advising um, royalty or um, important councils or whatever, their sole role was to be in contact with the one, or as we would say, the, the monadic consciousness. And so they could not be disturbed in any way. They were, they constantly had that, that, that tying in. And I, I think perhaps maybe they were middle piddle or I, I can't say for sure or not, but then again, that goes, um, that definitely violates like for example like the the agni yoga and Ag ageless wisdom thing that these concepts of striving and and moving forward and and you know striving towards the future and you know part of the idea is a you know moving targets har harder to hit so if you're if you're constantly striving and moving forward with that momentum you're you know you're not subject to these other um downsides that you might experience in third dimensional reality um that you know the, the mass conscious may, may experience who who are not who are not striving or are not aware of the striving and so I, I guess there's still some work to be done in that i had that could explain why it's easy to fall out of it because if you're if you're tied into the one and you perfectly have that consciousness and it may only be for a second but you have massive gains at, at that potential but the moment you move you're going to fall out of it it sounds like and that, that sounds consistent with other things but you know i wonder what that if there is that optimal um breakdown whether it's pareto or it's um you know some something else i'm i'm not sure it's interesting but the, the fascinating thing is I, I think once it's figured out too even on a ma microcosmic level it seems as if all these principles scale and so they you know they scale from the individual to the group to to humanity and so as an individual or as groups or, or more of us figure that out i believe it'll have that kind of ripple of, of effect throughout but it is um it, it is a it is a tricky thing, especially when you're in that flow state. It's um, it, it feels like you want to be in it forever, but then it's it's very easy to fall out. Um, I, in my opinion, easier to fall out of it than to stay in it a lot of times. But that's a good point about list, lifting your consciousness high um, to that that oneness state and and doing that. And you know, it's fascinating because I, I know there's these various like um, techniques and various things to do these things, and I find a lot of times, sometimes for me they work and other times they don't. And then a lot of times it's a spontaneous thing. Again, it's like when I'm not thinking about it, it'll sort of happen. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm in this place again together. And I know with certain groups that happens too, group work, where there's a certain flow that happens and it's just like there's a back and forth and a, you know, it's, it's almost um, between somewhere between a, you know, a, a regular working group and what you see with, with Tibetans sitting around um, drawing the, um, the, creating the mandalas out of sand perfectly without a single word spoken in telepathic rapport. Um, and again, I, I don't know if these things are explained or repeatable in that way, or if they're just something that drops in over time as one opens themselves up more to that monadic and or that soul and monadic consciousness at those levels, if it just sort of drops in and it's almost like you've always known how to do it. Um, but that, that's an excellent point. Of, I'd forgotten about that momentum part on the, on the pillar and not wanting to rest in, in that point perfectly. So 
Um, thank you. If we, if we look around us in nature, we see that growth happens in cycles a lot too. Um, and I think the spiral is an important um, an important shape. Um, um, I wanted to say one thing too, just for fun. Uh, Sherlock Holmes in one of the mysteries, Conan Doyle mysteries, says something to the effect that the future surrounds us, just not yet ready. As we go with the flow of uh, our sharing, we come to the time when um, yeah. we invite us into silence, reflecting on the seed thoughts that we could offer to put into the group chalice during the meditation. Very rich sharing and many potent ideas have uh, been circulated. So let us look together our inner eyes to those ideas and sense the most resonant seeds that could grow into thought forms to lead humanity. And today our meditation will be led by Tracy. If you want to add anything, Tracy, before we go into silence. Uh, no, I'll just give everybody a few moments here to uh, reflect. And then I'll start. Okay, uh -huh. let us begin through an alignment. Let us now close our eyes. Take a deep breath in and exhale out, relaxing the body. releasing the busy mind. Now bring your focus to the Ajna Center, allowing it to light up and fill your entire body with light. From here, Feel the warmth radiating from your heart as it expands outward, joining the brilliant vibrating light of our group heart located in the center of our group chalice. And through our alignment with each other, we expand our group light outward 
and align with our spiritual community and those around the world in the new group of world servers. From this alignment, we invite all those of the subtle and unseen worlds that share our common goal to join us in our work. Together, we merge and become one focalized point of light, joining the light and love of the hierarchy. As we form the triangle of Shambhala, hierarchy and humanity. The Buddhic energy of love wisdom held within this triangle enriches and supports our ability to receive and transmit the higher energies of love and light. Those energies which know, support, and enhance the unfoldment of the divine plan. Let us now visualize the glowing beauty of our group chalice in which our work together feeds and fills. Its radiance is enhanced by the beauty of the love that we offer through our selfless service. In this new moon, we are assisted by the qualities and supporting energies of Virgo and her esoteric ruler, the moon. She sits on the mutable cross, that cross which all the sons of men are subjected daily, learning by trial and error in their period of growth and development. In Virgo, we have the sixth labor, whose focus urges us to be keenly aware and on guard of the dangers that lead to error and mistakes in the world of incomplete Maya. It is in this labor we perfect discernment between the real and the unreal. separating the wheat from the chaff. This vigilance prepares us for the first initiation, the birth of the Christ. The new moon in Virgo encourages us by amplifying the opportunity for us to embrace and cultivate the plan which the masters know and serve. The moon and Virgo, ever feminine, and holding the foundational principle of response, nurtures the germ of the soul the inner Christ. She guides us in our response to the call of the Father. The mother, ever purifying crude matter, refining it through gentle sensitivity and knowing that the soul of man is immortal and its future is the future of a thing whose growth and splendor has no limit. The Tibetans said, the symbology of Virgo 
concerns the whole goal of the evolutionary process. That which is to shield, nurture, and finally reveal the spiritual reality. This reality is veiled in every form, but the human is equipped and fitted to manifest it in a matter different from any other expression of divinity, which makes it tangible and objective for which the whole creative process was intended. The moon is our caretaker, providing the stable, nurturing environment we need to cultivate intimacy with all of creation. The moon is the part of us that is fiercely protective of all life. In turn, we work for her by caring for and about the life around us. Cultivating empathy allows us to enter the waters of the emotional world of others and all living things. From here, we can then feel what they need. Through moon energy, we can measure a culture's evolution by whether that society protects, nurtures, and reveres its children, its elders, the environment, and all growing things. Through the moon, we gain access to ancestral wisdom and memories, which ignite the remembrance of our connection to all living things. And through the feminine aspect, as we nurture and connect through harmlessness, and response, the true brotherhood of man is realized. This is a fact in nature and not an ideal. Let us now connect with our topic, unification through right relations with all kingdoms. Take a few moments in silence to reflect on all that has been shared, as well as our responses. And as we do this, we allow our seed thoughts to crystallize, capturing the essence of the threads from our exchange that hold deep meaning within. With love, we offer these seeds into our chalice each of us speaking as we are moved to, allowing each seed to rest in silence for a while before offering the next one. We will now begin offering our seeds. Please unmute yourself when you are ready. Thank you.
One seed thought is maintain alignment with the one. Thank you. A seed thought could be with deep listening and curiosity, there's an opening to the one. Thank you. Understanding how we can nurture the evolution of the whole by recognizing and sacrificing the inessential. The error and mistakes of past centuries are the joint errors and mistakes of humanity as a whole. This recognition will lead to the establishing of the principle of sharing so needed in the world today. I am that hidden light of God that guards and nurtures the Christ child of divine consciousness, relating father spirit and mother matter. Keep as high as consciousness as possible in, and to look at things from the pers perspective of love. Love opens the door. Unity comes with peace, and peace is within everyone, but it can take an effort to access it. Nurturing the etheric thread which links all beings. Recognize ourselves as one within the diversity of life. Peace is each of us manifested by removing obstacles within ourselves.
equilibrium is a way to maintain right relationship with all kingdoms. Your git wrote, revealing the reality. Through cultivating empathy, we connect, nourish, and sustain unification with all kingdoms. We are all connected from the etheric subplanes and upwards.
Thank you, everyone. Let us now visualize and focus our group intention on the distribution of the resonance created by the fusion of our seed thoughts. Visualize our chalice vibrating and resonating within as it is held by the embracing light of our group. This beautiful, vitalizing and radiant light becomes increasingly enhanced with beauty and wisdom as the tone of its note is set and now flows forth into the world, expressing on the mental, astral, and etheric planes, being received by all recipient and receptive hearts and minds. As we seal our work together through this meditation, let us affirm the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, light streams forth into human minds. Light descends on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, love streams forth into the hearts of men and Christ returns to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, purpose guides the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, the plan of love and light work out and seals the door where evil dwells. Light and love and power restores the plan on earth. Let us now sound three silent ohms. Thank you, Tracy and, and everyone. 
as we return from the depth of that meditation, ready to go back into the world and carry these seeds with us. And just reminding everyone that there are some more if events and webinars coming up if you want to add your energy to them. On August the 29th, the Jerusalem Meditation. September the 8th, the Group Vision Quest what is true now and what's the next right step and september the 11th the virgo full moon meditation for the common good september the 13th the souls of the nations creative lab So as we close the webinar with so much gratitude for each other and for the sharing and the depth that we go to, let us sound the mantra of DK. I pledge myself to the path of love. I demand of my soul that I, the spirit in form, shall act as a channel for compassion and an instrument for love until I know myself to be love itself. I am that love. With pure intent, I serve. This love and zeal in me must feed the aspiration of my fellow men. To this in knowledge full, I pledge myself. Ooh.